So Jared and Lethal were referred to by the Acclaim. They weren't out yet. So the first team to interrupt is the Gun Club. Then Jared and Lethal come out, and they're all arguing over who deserves the next tag title shot. But Billy Gunn says, no, we want to face the best. And then FTR come out. They shake hands with the Acclaimed. And I'm thinking, it was like, are we are we going to get this at Final Battle? No, this is going to happen on Wednesday at Dynamite. Oh, yeah, they announced that afterwards. Yeah. Hmm. Uh, non-title? Wait, is this for the title? What is it's this? for the AEW tag titles. They're doing Wednesday. this like on four days notice? Yes. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, <laughs> I don't know if that's what I would have done. But then again, like, you know, like, is is Dynamite the better place to do it? Or or is Final Battle a, a better place to, to do it? Which one is more important? I mean, my maybe my my concern about it is just like FTR have been campaigning for the, these title shots for a long, long time, and I would would have hoped that you know their actual build to getting a challenge even would would be a bit more than four. Like this is their chance to win all the tag titles. Yeah, yeah, it is. So how are they going to get out of this booking? I think the acclaimed are going to retain the belts. FTR gonna is going to beat them. I don't see them doing it. Which shenanigans? Um, they could because it probably sets up FTR and the Gun Club, which to me is mm-hmm. a lesser match that you're asking people to pay for several days later. Yes, it is. Although, it's but again, show, John, you, you don't, don't have, have to watch to, it. You don't have to watch it. That's <laughs> the the tagline. The show that you can miss, but if you do, you'll get this. I don't think there's fundamentally something wrong with like you know like saving the real big match for 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 dynamite as opposed to your ROH show. Let's be honest about what the ROH show is. Like yes, you want to make a bit of money like with with the ROH uh, uh, event, but it's really I think more so just there to number one keep the brand alive. It's there to kind of be proof of concept in case you you know you want to continue to shop or, shop it around. Um, but I I I would argue you know other than stacking maybe the, the 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 top of the main event and maybe matches for the hardcores like a, a match with the ftr going for the championship i don't think makes that big of a difference you know um whether it's on the undercard and there, therefore why not save it for tv i just wish you'd spend a bit more time building to it than just like hey here, here it is in four days like getting this on dynamite i almost wonder nah it probably wouldn't make that big of a difference i would i would never want to put out a pay-per-view that feels that doesn't feel like a big deal, that doesn't feel like an event. Um, When you put out a show that is just take it or leave it, and that's sort of like we joke about it, but that's kind of what it's, you're either invested in, like you're just gonna buy every pay-per-view that AEW puts out slash Ring of Honor, separate entities, or if you are someone that is really invested in, whoa, okay, the Jericho Castagnoli program, but to me, it's it's a show that is one where it feels like when WWE did the brand split and they did like the singular brand pay-per-views that mm-hmm. just felt as though I'm not getting the full WWE product that I'm used to on these pay-per-views. I'm getting a slice of it and it's a show I can miss. And what we learned from that period was many fans did skip those shows and their pay-per-views got watered down and their buys went down. And that went across the board because people learned hey, I could miss this pay-per-view and I didn't miss anything. And I don't have to get next month's either. And I'll buy a couple shows a year. But right now, that's what Final Battle feels like. And I would always be trying to make my pay-per-views feel like a show that I can't miss, that I really need to see. What What's the card right now? Maybe let's take a bit of a you know pause in the, in the review just to kind of go over what matches we're, we're looking at here. We've got uh, Chris Jericho versus Claudio Castagnoli for the ROH Championship. If Castagnoli loses, he will have to join the JAS. Daniel Garcia versus Wheeler Yuta for the Pier title. Mercedes versus Athena for the ROH Women's Championship. Um, looking like potentially Joe versus Wardlow? No, they, they've, they set up Joe and Juice Robinson. Oh, for final battle. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I missed. I must have missed all that. Um. All right then. <laughs> okay. And Did you miss we, the juice segment? I saw the juice segment. I guess I I didn't hear where that match was taking place. Yeah, we're getting Samoa Joe on the same show. They set up Samoa Joe and Darby Allen for Wednesday for the TNT title. But the match you have to pay for is Samoa Joe and Juice Robinson on Saturday. 
Right. Okay. Like that to me is just counter when you're announcing to, and same with like FTR and the acclaimed. It's like if they set up FTR and the gun club, it's like, what are they asking you to pay for versus what are the matches I'm getting on Wednesday that feel far superior? Yeah. Yeah. Like and Joe then, and Darby is a really unique match and that's the free one. Yeah. So you're getting that you're getting, um, uh, this, uh, Shane Taylor, JD Griffey versus Swerve in our glory. Um, it's probably looking... you're you're probably getting uh, Dalton Castle and the boys against the embassy. They kind of uh, tease that at mm-hmm. uh, uh, I, I think at the dark tapings. Yeah. So does this card feel like it's a, it's an event? Does it feel like it's something you can't? Miss? No, no, it doesn't. I, 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 I think it it's missing that one big match, you know, like this, you know, FTR versus Briscoe's type of match. Um, like, I don't know if, if the prior ROH shows had felt that, like that either um they kind of just made their name on like you know having like hot matches and and, the the first one had a big buzz because it was the first tony khan produced roh show the second one um just coming off the first ftr briscoe's match like that felt much bigger and and this one listen this one has jericho and claudio and i i don't i'm not going to state that this show is going to do bad because i think um I think a lot of these these AEW pay per views have done surprisingly higher buys than the build has sometimes led us into that direction. So I, I don't want to uh, you know predict doom and gloom for this number, but um, just just like from my standpoint, if I was just a consumer, like th- this would be one I'd certainly be on the fence about buying, even if I'm someone that's buying all the AEW shows. Yeah, if money is tight and you're looking at, you know, like however much they're being, they're asking you to spend on this. Yeah, maybe this is one you 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 look at and taking a step back on. I just get the sense, like in terms of promotion, they're they're really selling this more on like the names that are going to appear, and, and that in itself being a, a novelty, like seeing a Chris Jericho on a show like this, you know, seeing a, even Athena, you know, being attached to this, Keith Lee and Swerve Scott being attached to it. That is almost like supposed to be more than we should be expecting for ROH. Um, and is that enough, you know, for, for the diehard AEW fan that wants to be a completionist and wants to watch every single thing? 